Hi folks, part three of moving fluids through the body. In this section of the lecture, we're gonna talk about um, the cardiac cycle um, or the heartbeat as well as um, the two types of circulation, pulmonary and systemic. And we're also gonna talk about um, the path of blood through the heart. So both of these are um, MRIs. Um, this is a, let's see, it's not gonna show up. This is a frontal plane um, generated from an MRI, and this is sagittal. Um, unfortunately, I don't have the ability to play these within this, um, the app I'm using to create these videos, but I really suggest that you take a look at this. Um, put your um, put the PowerPoint in presentation mode when you get a chance um, because it's it's really remarkable. See if you can identify what you're seeing. Okay, so structure of the heart, right? We talked about the superior and inferior vena cava. They return blood from systemic circulation into the right atrium. Remember, when you're looking at the front of the structure, left and right are reversed compared to your own body. The um, <clears throat> blood that enters um, the left atrium comes from the four pulmonary veins. And um, atrium is a general term for an entryway. Now there are valves, uh, four valves in the heart. Um, there's a pair between each atrium and each and its corresponding ventricle. And then between the ventricle and the, um, the artery that blood moves through when it leaves the ventricle. And those valves are one-way doors that keep blood flowing in the correct direction so that you don't end up having um, blood that's already picked up oxygen um, going backwards into the lungs, for example. The valves that <clears throat> excuse me, the valves between the atria and um, the ventricles are anchored um, with chordae tendinae. Um, and these are um, connective tissue that are attached to the valves. And they are embedded within small muscles that protrude from the walls of the ventricles called papillary muscles. The, um, when you look at um, a dissected heart, you'll see on the, uh, on the interior these ridges of, of cardiac muscle. Those are called trabeculae carnae, um, or meat beams, as I like to call them. One thing that's important to um, keep in mind with respect to the function of the heart is that when the atrioventricular valves are open, the semilunar valves are closed and vice versa. So the valves between the ventricle and its artery are closed if the atrioventricular valves are open. And similarly, when the semilunar valves are open, the atrioventricular valves close. So the ventricles are the really um, sort of the meatiest part of the heart. They're the part where um, you have the thickest layers of, um, of cardiac muscle. Um, the right ventricle here is gonna send uh, blood through the pulmonary semilunar valve to the pulmonary trunk, which then splits to go to 
the right lung and the left lung. The left ventricle sends blood through the aortic semilunar valve into the aorta. And that one's usually the easiest vessel to recognize because it has that sort of um, uh, the, the aortic arch shape. And often, too, it will have a little, um, I call it a mohawk. It's not actually a mohawk, but a set of three arteries coming off the top of it. Um, the aorta sends oxygenated blood to the entire body, whereas <clears throat> the pulmonary arteries only send blood to the lungs. And that explains why the left, it's kind of difficult to see the way this particular picture is drawn, but that explains why the left ventricle is more muscular than the right because it has to pump blood throughout the body rather than just from just um, to the side, which is what the pulmonary, um, where the pulmonary arteries go. So I guess I answered that question. Um, the left ventricle is more muscular than the right, and that's because it's part of systemic circulation, which means sending blood to the entire body. Um, and it has to create enough force to get it back as well. Arteries are more muscular than veins. Why would that be the case? Well, remember we said that the pressure against the walls of the arteries is much higher. Um, and so the walls need to be thicker, more muscular, have more elastic fibers in them in order to resist that. The veins have thinner walls and a larger lumen, right? A larger empty space. Um, and that's um, a reflection of their ability to um, hold or store blood. And then finally, capillaries are these microscopic tubes that are made of a single layer Here's my little capillary I'm drawing for you. A single layer of squamous epithelium that is just big enough for one red blood cell to fit through at a time. So why does that make sense? Well, because that's where gas and nutrient and waste exchange takes place. And when you have exchange of materials that's driven by diffusion, the last thing you need is uh, a big thick cell because um, that's gonna slow things down, slow down the transport a lot. Okay, so let's think about the path of a single drop of blood through the heart. Um, and uh, one thing I wanna make really, really clear with when we talk about this, is that um, this is a continuous circuit, right? It's a little, the shape is a little funky, but there's actually no beginning and no end. So although we, um, we often teach this as starting with the uh, deoxygenated blood returning through the vena cava into um, into the heart, you don't have to start there, right? You, you want to get to the point where you can um, imagine yourself as a red blood cell in any part of the body and be able to reconstruct what kind of, uh, what structure that blood cell is going to pass through next. You can hear Mr. Spots clickety clacking around. All right, so um, blood comes from the head and the upper appendages into the right atrium, blood from the lower body enters the same chamber, the right atrium, goes through the 
tricuspid valve. Um, and remember the right lung has three lobes, so um, one way to re that's one way to remember it. It's also, you can remember that sort of try before you buy phrase. Um, so blood flows through the tricuspid or right atrioventricular valve, swirls around, goes out through the pulmonary semilunar valve to the pulmonary trunk, to the left pulmonary arteries, the right pulmonary arteries, to the capillary beds of the lungs. Then it returns through, once it's dropped off CO2 and picked up oxygen, it returns through the left and the right pulmonary veins into the left atrium. Right? And the way you can tell that um, you're looking at the, the left atrium is that it has four openings into it rather than, than two large ones. So that drop of blood is going to go through the left atrium, through the bicuspid, also known as the mitral valve, or the left atrioventricular valve. It swirls around, it is going to go out through the pulmonary semilunar valve, or sorry, the aortic semilunar valve, which is hidden from view here, um, to the aortic arch. It's going to go off to service the head and um, the upper appendages, and then the aorta curves around the back of the heart and um, becomes what we call the descending aorta, and then eventually the abdominal aorta. So for folks who like things written out, um, this all of this text is what I just was saying, um, and you've got the, the valves put inside parentheses. Again, remember, you don't get locked into always starting with the body and systemic circulation, right? Um, if I ask you on our next lab practical, um, you have a blood cell that finds itself in the pulmonary trunk. What's the next, what are the next three structures that it, it's going to move through? You want to be able to answer that, right? Um, not because you've um, memorized a list of things, but because you can, uh, you've gotten to the point where you can see the structure. Okay, so last week when we talked about the respiratory system, we very briefly touched on these two distinct but connected circuits of, um, or um, circulations, circulation circuits, same thing, um, for blood. The one we focused on last week was the pulmonary circuit. So that carries blood from the heart through the pulmonary trunk into, through the pulmonary arteries into the lungs to pick up oxygen and then come back. Actually, back here it doesn't go all the way down there. So that circulation um, starts both of these um, types of circulation start with the ventricle and end with an atria. So you start with the right ventricle and you end with the left atrium with pulmonary circuit. Right? And remember what I said last week. Think about why you would send blood to the lungs other than to service the, um, the cells that make up the lungs. Right. If you're, if you think about the function of the respiratory system and of the lungs, it's to pull in oxygen and get rid of CO2. The system, I can't say it, systemic circuit um, sends blood, um, oxygenated blood from the left ventricle through the aortic semilunar valve, then up 
to service the head and the upper appendages down through the descending aorta. Um, and this represents all the capillary beds in the trunk and the legs versus the head and the um, head and the arms. So the trunk, um, once oxygen is dropped off, and the next stop is to come back into the atrium. And the same thing with deoxygenated blood from the upper part of the body. So these two circuits are completely separate from one another if what we're talking about is the heart itself, right? You don't, the, the, uh, the right side of the heart deals exclusively with deoxygenated blood, taking it in, sending it out to the lungs, and the left side of the heart deals exclusively with oxygenated blood. Right, oxygenated blood from the lungs comes back in to the left atrium and is sent out to the body with, by the left ventricle. So one thing I wanna call your attention to with this figure is, all right, we've got the, um, the gut here, so think stomach and intestines, etc. Remember when we talked about the digestive system, we talked about the hepatic portal vein, which is, remember HEPA means liver. A portal system is a set of blood vessels that's separated from the rest of circulation. So this is the hepatic portal vein that's carrying deoxygenated blood um, through the liver. Um, Right, it's, it's rich in nutrients, but potentially also rich in um, toxins that the liver needs to take care of. Okay, so can you tell you need to be able to distinguish between pulmonary and systemic circulation or loops or circuits? Um, yes, indeed you do. Okay, so the pulmonary loop, only between the heart and lungs. So blood comes, um, is, is pushed out of the right ventricle, um, goes through the pulmonary trunk, pulmonary arteries, to the capillary beds of the lungs. Then that blood, once it's dropped off waste in the form of CO2, picked up oxygen, comes back through the um, four pulmonary veins into the left atrium. So you start with the right ventricle and you end with the left atrium if you're talking about the pulmonary loop. The systemic loop starts right after the pulmonary loop leaves off. So you start with the left ventricle Blood moves through the aortic semilunar valve, out the aorta, to the rest of the body. And after it's picked up CO2 and dropped off oxygen, etc., that blood will return to the heart um, through the inferior vena cava or the superior, if we're talking about the heart and is gonna come into the right atrium. So with systemic circulation, you start with the left ventricle, you end with the right atrium. Okay. I wish we were together so that I could quiz you about this. Um, so take a minute to quiz yourself Think, think about naming each of the valves as well as um, the structures of the heart, the different great vessels that uh, enter and leave the heart, and whether or not they're carrying oxygenated or deoxygenated blood. Right, this is a really good image to practice with um, because you'll definitely be seeing something like this on our 
our next exam. Okay, so let's let me go back here for a second. So um, we've got the inferior vena cava, the superior vena cava, they come in to the right atrium. They pass through the tricuspid, also known as the right atrioventricular valve, into the right ventricle. That blood, when the ventricles contract, is going to get be pushed out through the pulmonary semilunar valve, go into the pulmonary trunk, and then into the right and left pulmonary arteries to the lungs. Oxygen-rich blood is going to come back, <coughs> excuse me, through the pulmonary veins, go through the bicuspid, also known as the mitral valve, and when the ventricles contract, going to go out through the aortic semilunar valve to serve the body. And we put a little descending aorta in there so you remember what that is. Okay, so pulmonary circulation. Remember that the circu two circulations are joined in, uh, by capillary beds in the body. So pulmonary circulation is going to start with the right ventricle through the pulmonary trunk, pulmonary arteries to the lungs, back through the pulmonary veins and is gonna end in the left atrium. Systemic circulation is gonna start with the left ventricle. Blood moves through the aortic semilunar valve, through the aorta, to all the other arteries of the body, including the descending aorta. After um, it's dropped off oxygen, picked up CO2, Blood will return through the inferior and superior vena cava into the right atrium. Boom. All right, so the heartbeat, um, a heartbeat is another name for the cardiac cycle. Um, and the cardiac cycle is contraction simultaneous contraction of both atria, which is the plural of atrium, and then of both ventricles, and then relaxation of all four. Those of you that are first responders, EMTs or paramedics, um, already understand that it's a little more complicated than that, um, that there's atrial systole and ventricular systole, but um, for our purposes, we're going to throw both uh, atrial and ventricular systole into one baggie um, for folks that are just learning it. So each heartbeat is called a cardiac cycle. So you've got atrial contraction, right, which is made possible by um, the conduction system of the heart, which we'll talk about in the last video, and then the ventricles contract together, and then all chambers relax, right? If you're healthy, um, sort of the average American is going to have a heart rate of about 70 beats per minute, 70 cardiac cycles per minute. The active phase of the cardiac cycle is called systole. Um, that's the pumping or working phase. So 
all of the chambers are contracting. Again, the atria contract first and then the ventricles contract, but we're sort of putting it together. Um, diastole is when the chambers um, relax and that allows blood to fill the chambers. Heart sounds are, um, when you hear heart sounds, the lub-dub or um, lub-dub, depending on, on your hearing, um, what you're hearing is the, the closing of the atrioventricular and then the semilunar valves. Um, a heart murmur is caused when someone has a valve that allows blood to leak through it. So sort of imagine, you know, if you 